if you were anywhere near a screen yesterday, a TV or a phone or anyone that has a TV or a phone, you knew that Sean Diddy Combs was arrested last night. Here is a rundown. Um, NBC, this NBC article is a great rundown of everything that has happened since then. I was waiting for this morning because I knew that the indictment was going to be unsealed this morning. There are a couple of different writers that are giving the play-by-play -play of what is happening. This is from David Lee. He says, three count indictment against Combs include alleged criminal acts going back 16 years, court documents say. The racketeering count covers acts allegedly committed while by the defendant starting back in 2008, while ex-trafficking and transportation to engage in prostitution started in 2009. Combs allegedly changed his public name and persona to Diddy in 2005, dropping the P in the P Diddy. Federal agents raided Combs homes in Miami and L.A. in March and came away with supplies allegedly used in SAs. At the time of the raids, federal officials would only say they executed law enforcement actions in New York as a part of an ongoing investigation along with teams in L.A. and Miami. In court papers today, government officials revealed they took off, I'm sorry, they took supplies Combs allegedly used in a freak off, in freak off SAs. So we're going to see freak off a few different times. And I did get them the indictment. They actually use freak offs in the indictment. It's, and this part is very interesting. Agents seized free, um, freak off supplies, including narcotics and more than 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant. 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant. I'm going to say that one more time. 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant. See, a new writer. This is Mike Collier. At the height of his power, Combs was more than just a musician. He controlled a vast business empire, including record labels and alcohol and clothing brands that made him a billionaire. Now prosecutors are alleging that Combs' commercial enterprise was a key component of his criminal enterprise. The mogul used his businesses and several of his employees to carry out, facilitate, and cover up his abuse and commercial acts, according to an indictment unsealed this morning. Those employees, including security staff, household staff, personal assistants, and other high-ranking supervisors and other close associates, acted as Combs intermediaries, and their conduct um, was facilitated and assisted by Combs' um, control of Combs' business. That's the thing. And that's where R. Kelly um, had his issues as well. All of these people had to be in place to facilitate, hide, and help, you know, cover up and all of this stuff. They they are not acting alone. They have people around him that are making these things happen. And when he goes down, a lot of other people are going to have to come down as well, as well as people that are in law enforcement that may have turned a blind eye, employees that work in other places that would have helped um, facilitate or hide things. A lot of people are going to go down or should be going down because of this. Federal prosecutors seeking to seize assets. The U.S. government is seeking to recover significant financial assets from the famed music mogul through, his, through this prosecution. Combs could be on the hook for any and all property, real and personal, and an undetermined sum of money involved in these alleged crimes. According to the indictment, the court document did not specifically list any assets or amount of money it would be seeking to take from Combs. Drugs fueled days-long freak-offs, videos used to ensure obedience, prosecutors say. S.A. allegedly directed by Combs was fueled by drugs and often went days at a time. Victims were filled with drugs to control them for long stretches of time. Authorities said with participants typically having to get IV fluids to recover from the physical exertion. And once the victims were lured into this orbit, they were coerced to keep following the suspect's orders. Combs used sensitive, embarrassing, and incriminating recordings that he made during the freak-offs as collateral to ensure continued obedience and silence of the victims. Doesn't this sound exactly like what R. Kelly did, where he had all of these tapes? And I bet when they did these raids, they found these tapes. And the, the thing is, these types of people, you know that they keep trophies, so I wouldn't be surprised if he has all the evidence, if they have all the evidence they really need to keep him and lots of people locked up.
freak offs, Holmes is accused of forcing and recording um, X acts. Federal prosecutors accused Combs of forcing victims into X acts. Um, he allegedly called freak offs, which he recorded for his viewing pleasure. Combs used force to cause victims to engage in extended X acts with male commercial X workers that Combs arranged, directed, self pleasured during, and often electronically recorded. The defendant called these acts his freak offs. If he's using all of these commercial ex workers, this is going to be wild because that means that there are a lot of people that can speak to the things that have happened. Combs allegedly used his powers to abuse, coerce, and fulfill his actual desires. The charges against Combs allege he threatened and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his actual desires for years. Holmes created a criminal enterprise whose members and associates engaged in various crimes such as ex-trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. I like how those writers put a rundown of what is in the indictment. I did get screenshots of the indictment, but this arrest is probably going to get messy. So we're, we're going to see what other dominoes start to fall. This all started with Cassie in that bombshell lawsuit that she did last year, and he has been in a find out season ever since then. This is going to this is going to definitely be crazy. You know, people on Twitter had some thoughts. I wanted to bring this in from Jamel Hill. She says, I know everybody is going to get these jokes off about Diddy and by extension R. Kelly, but think of the numerous black women whose lives were ruined by these horrendous people. The narrative is not another black man got taken down because this ain't got sh to do with black men as a whole. The narrative is, thank God, these women are finally getting the justice they deserve. And if you don't give a gosh darn about black women, please know and understand that some of his victims were also men. You should want somebody who is allegedly a monster to be locked away where they deserve to be. Art Candy says, since Diddy was just arrested in New York following an indictment for alleged ex-trafficking, seems a good time to point out he used to hang out with Donald Trump and he's an investor on X. So here's Diddy with Donald Trump. Here's Diddy with a younger Donald Trump. And here's Diddy with Elon Musk. I'm probably going to have to use this picture again just to solidify that a lot of these people hung out with other people that are probably also monsters. Okay, so the anonymous nobody says, Black Rob died homeless. Shine said in prison for nine years. Cassie got abused for years, all while Diddy was out here acting like he was this good guy who wanted to see everybody win. On top of that, he had a mohawk. Okay, he had a mohawk. That's what we should be rounding that out with. And I'm just going to skip down here to Kyra. R. Kelly seeing Diddy walk into prison. And he's smiling. So that is just a quick rundown of what is going on. I am going to look at the indictment and give that its own post. Um, but, you know, still go ahead. Let me know what you think about all of this so far. Drop your initial thoughts um, when you first saw it go down. Up until this point with the freak offs and the bottles of baby oil and lube and all of that. I think that I think this dude, I think they really solidified their their case before finally sealing the deal. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment and share. I'm about to get into this Sean Combs unsealed indictment. But I did want to start off this post with this tweet, this picture of. Um, Trump, Donald J. Trump, who is currently running for president, and Sean Combs. And this person, WTF GOP, says, why are all Trump's friends ex-traffickers? There are pictures everywhere of Sean Diddy Combs with him and Jeffrey Epstein. Hmm, really weird. The, the party, the GOP, they like family values, but they also like this man. It's so strange. All right, let's get into this indictment. All right, so let's try to read through this. The United States of America versus Sean Combs, count one, racketeering conspiracy. The grand jury charges. 
Here is the overview. It says, for decades, Sean Combs, the defendant, abused, threatened, and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his actual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. To do so, Combs relied on the employees, resources, and influences of the, of the multifaceted business empire that he led and controlled, creating a criminal enterprise whose members and associates engaged in and attempted to engage in, among other crimes, ex-trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. Sean Combs, um, the defendant, operated his business headquartered at various times in Manhattan and LA under a variety of United States label corporate entities, including Bad Boy, Bad Boy Entertainment, Combs Enterprises, and Glo um, Combs Global, collectively the Combs Business. Corporate entities in the Combs Business included, among other things, record labels, a recording studio, an apparel line, an alcoholic spirits business, a marketing agency, and a television network and media company. At times, um, I'm sorry, at all times relevant to this indictment, Sean Combs, the defendant, engaged in a persistent and pervasive pattern of abuse towards women and other individuals. This abuse was at times verbal, emotional, physical, and sexual. As part of his pattern of abuse, Combs manipulated women to participate in highly orchestrated performances of actual activities with male commercial ex workers. At times, Combs and others acting at his direction made arrangements for women and commercial ex-workers to fly to Combs' location. Combs ensured participation from the women by, among other things, obtaining and distributing narcotics to them, controlling their careers, leveraging his financial support, and threatening to cut off the same and using intimidation and violence. Physical abuse by Sean Combs, the defendant, was recurrent and widely known. On numerous occasions from at least in or about 2009, continuing for years, Combs assault, assaulted women by, among other things, striking, punching, dragging, throwing objects at, and kicking them. These assaults were, at times, witnessed by others and including one instance at an L.A. hotel in or about March 2016 with Cassie, um, which was captured on video and later publicly reported, where Combs kicked, dragged, and threw a vase at a woman as she was attempting to leave. When a member of the hotel security staff intervened, Combs attempted to bribe the staff members to ensure a silence. Combs' violence was not limited to these women. It extended to his employees, witnesses to his abuse, and others. Sean Combs, the defendant, including certain employees, I'm sorry, used the Combs business, including certain employees, to carry out, facilitate, and cover up his abuse and commercial acts. These employees, including security staff, household staff, and personal assistants, and high-ranking supervisors, and other close associates, acted as Combs intermediaries, and their conduct was facilitated and assisted by Combs' control of Combs business. The Combs Enterprise from at least in or about 2008 through on uh, or about the date of filing this indictment, Sean, Sean Combs, the defendant, and others known and unknown were members um, and associates of a criminal organization, the Combs Enterprise or the Enterprise. Members and associates of the Combs Enterprise engaged in and attempted to engage in, among other activities, ex-trafficking, forced labor, interstate transportation for purposes of smarstitution, coercion and enticement to engage in smarstitution, narcotics offenses, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. The Combs Enterprise, including its leadership, its members, and its associates, constituted an enterprise as defined by Title 18, United States Code Section um, 1961-4, that is a group of individuals associated, in fact, although not a legal entity. The Combs Enterprise consists of Sean Combs, the defendant, entities within the Combs business, including but not limited to Bad Boy Entertainment, Combs Enterprise, and um, Combs Global, individuals employed by and associated with Combs business, and others known and unknown. The Combs Enterprise constituted an ongoing 
organization whose members functioned as a continuing unit for a common purpose of achieving objectives of the Combs Enterprise. Okay, so this is a lot just talking about his business. Um, the purposes of Combs uh, Enterprise, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to skip past that. Okay, I'm going to start back up here. Combs and other members and associates of Combs Enterprise wielded the power and prestige of Combs' role at Combs Business to intimidate, threat, and lure female victims into Combs' orbit, often under the pre pretense of a romantic relationship. Combs then used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended X acts with male commercial workers, um, X workers that Combs referred to as, among other things, freak offs. Freak offs were elaborate and produced X performances that Combs arranged, directed, and self-pleasured to during and often electronically re recorded. In arranging these freak offs, Combs, with the assistance of members and associates of Combs Enterprise, transported and caused to be transported commercial X workers across state lines and internationally. Freak offs occurred regu regularly, sometimes lasting multiple days, and often involved multiple commercial X workers. During freak offs, Combs distributed a wide variety of controlled substance substances to victims, in part to keep victims obedient and compliant. Sometimes, unbeknownst to, to the victims, Combs kept videos he filmed of victims engaging in X acts with commercial X workers. After freak offs, Combs and the victims typically received IV fluids to recover from the physical exertion and drug use. Members and associates of Combs Enterprise include, including high ranking supervisors, security staff, household staff, personal assistants, and other Combs business employees facilitated the freak offs by, among other things, booking hotel rooms for freak offs, stocking hotel rooms in advance with required freak off supplies, including controlled substances, baby oil, lubricant, extra linens, uh, extra linens, and lighting, cleaning the hotel rooms after the freak offs to try to mitigate room damage, arranging for travel for victims, commercial ex workers, and combs to and from freak offs resupplying combs with requested supplies, delivering large sums of cash to combs to pay for the commercial X workers, and scheduling the de delivery of IV fluids. In and about March 2024, during searches of combs residences in Miami, Florida, and LA, um, law enforcement seized freak off supplies, including narcotics and more than a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricants. Um, Combs subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse to cause victims to engage in freak offs. Combs maintained control over his victims through, among other things, physical violence, promises of career opportunities, granting and threatening to withhold financial support, and by other coercive means, including tracking their whereabouts, dictating the victim's appearance, monitoring their medical records controlling their housing, and supplying them with controlled substances. During and separate from freak offs, Combs, among other things, hit, kicked through objects at dragged victims at times by their hair. These assaults often resulted in injuries that took days or weeks to heal. Combs also threatened victims' careers and livelihoods, including if they resisted participating in freak offs. Victims believed they could not refuse Combs' demands without risking their financial or job security or without repercussions in the form of physical and emotional abuse. I only got up to page 7 of 14, and I'm going to stop there because I think that we can get the gist of it. Y'all jump in here. Let me know what you think so far. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.